So it's kind of general process where we take hopefully any graph complex and make oriented counterpart of it. Uh, so generally graph complexes have uh, edges that are undirected. Well, undirecting usually comes from uh, in the first definition I have orientation, but then I identify it with the edge of a different orientation with maybe plus or minus sign. Uh, so if sine plus is just simply non-directed edge, and if it's minus, then we need to remember a bit uh, direction of edges, but it's important only up to the sign. Uh, so these are normal. Let's call it normal. And then oriented. Graph complex, it would be more black complexes, but they have edges that are strictly oriented, are strictly directed. So they have direction. Sometimes I uh, write the, this arrow ticker. And there is a condition no cycle. Along directions, so that means it's uh, I this allow a path, closed path that goes along arrows. So because of this condition, or there are some simple consequences of this condition, here there always exists a source complex, a source vertex. That's vertex that has only outgoing edges, and there also always exists target vertex. It's simple. And moreover, I can make an order of vertices and draw it, for example, like this, such that arrows always go, let's say, up. And maybe if something is here, then it's we'll go like this. So this is an example of a graph that's element of one of oriented graph complexes. So you maybe immediately see a connection with proper here, but let's not talk about that. Uh, so, uh, what is my goal? My goal is to uh, pick up any graph complex, let's with normal edges, and make oriented version or oriented counterpart of it that's quasi isomorphic to it. Uh, I will do it in a couple of examples. Uh, Okay, let us write examples here. Yeah, okay. So, first example will be very graph complex and with one hair. So, this one means one hair. Uh, I'll draw an example. So this is an example of so these are vertices. And let's say here is here. So hair or leg, sometimes it's called leg, but in this case, when I have only one, it's nothing else but having the special vertex. So equivalently, I can think of this graph complex as a graph complex having one special vertex. 
I'm not sure if this graph complex is useful somewhere, but it's the simplest uh, to show this procedure. And then, so that's why I, I start with it first. Uh, so this M, as you probably know, is a graph complex parameter. It means that vertices are of degree vertices are of degree minus n minus n is degree of vertices and n minus one is degree of edges uh, so each counterpart will be fairly oriented graph complex n plus one so parameter is changed again one here. So I want to find a map that goes from here to here. I will go and call it Y. Um, okay, so how does it look like? First, uh, I need. I choose a spanning tree of this graph. For example, a spanning tree can be this one. It has to be tree, it has to contain all vertices, and it contains the hair. So, through this spanning tree, I will define a map I of this spanning tree. Ending up here. Uh, okay, I forgot one uh, one extra condition here. So here, sorry, extra condition. Do you see this size of letters? Okay, this means condition. Uh, no condition is that there is no sources. And one pair is incoming here. So no sources and one incoming here means that everything is sourced from that here. So flow comes from that here. So where is this map to? Um, graph that looks similar to this one. So I have one incoming here. So these edges that leave in the spanning tree or edges that are directed away from the hair and the rest I put an extra vertex here and edges go towards the vertex. Clearly from the construction, you see that this is oriented. There is no closed, closed path because I started with a tree. There are no sources. This is only kind of source, but it has incoming hair. And yeah, this leaves so in here your reactive graph complex. And the total map is, as you can imagine, Phi of let's say graph gamma sum over all spanning trees tau gamma phi phi tau And all the formulas will be similar to this one. So two claims about this map. First, it is a map of complexes, means psi d equals d psi, uh, phi, sorry. And the second phi is 
fase isomorfista. So, the, I'm working with the uh, this differential that's contracting an edge. It is simple, simpler to work with this, uh, this differential. Of course, in the dual picture, I can have a differential that splits a vertex, but then dual map will go opposite. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there was a Mark asked me yesterday to explain how this map is well defined because of some parities of edges, vertices, and so on. So, first, what you can check is that the map is of degree zero or at least of constant degree. Uh, it slightly depends on the definition of degree, but these are vertices are degree minus n, edges are degree n minus one. So here, instead of n, I have n plus one. You can just check that degree degree is constant. But other thing that depends on the n are parities. So <coughs> if I have an even graph complex that's for n even. Uh, yes, and they. <clears throat> talked about them a bit. Uh, then edges are odd. This means that if I switch to edges, the graph goes to its negative. So how does this fit with this picture? Because here, if I have here even graph complex, and here I have odd graph complex. So here edges would be um, even and vertices would be odd and the direction of an edge is, would be minus. So let's say here I start with even, and that means edges are odd. They have intrinsic uh, labeling. Let's call them one, two, three, four, five. So these are numbers for edges. If I switch to edges, I get minus sign. But here, edges are even, but vertices are odd. Uh, and I will label vertices with the labels of edges from here. So first, edges that are in the tree will give their name to vertices that the edge is heading to. So this will be vertex one, this will be vertex three, and this will be vertex four. And these two edges that are not in a tree will give their name to vertices in the middle of a new, uh, a new edge. This, so this will be vertex five, and this will be vertex two. So this one vertex is special, we can call it zero or six or 10. So now if I switch to edges here, names of two edges here, this will switch names of two vertices here and mine, I will get minus here and also minus here. So this thing is well defined. Uh, similarly, it works with, if I start, with um, with all graph complex where vertices are odd, then I will uh, I don't have an extra <laughs> color, but use white. So let's call this vertex one, two, three. Or, okay, no, this is special, I have put it here. And yeah, here, they are also increasing in their directions. So how I, now it's important how I label edges here. So similarly, if this is vertex one, this gives name to this edge. 
So this edge will be three because of this three and this edge will be two because of this two. So now I have edge is one, two, three. And the rest in each pair of edges, I give names along the arrow. So one, two, three, this will be four, five. So it goes here and here will be four, five, six, seven. So it's irrelevant if this is four, five, six, seven or four, five, six, seven, because switching two pairs gives plus sign again. And which one is four and which one is five? Switching here is changing direction here. So giving, getting minus sign here gives minus sign here. So everything is well defined. Any questions by now? Okay. So if not, I will start, I will give us idea of the proof of this here that why this works. So I will not prove the, the, this quasi-isomorphism, it's a combinatorial brute force using some spectral sequences, but this may give you some idea why, why does this work. So first I will a bit simplify this and put extra condition. No passing vertices. Passing vertex is stolent vertex with one incoming edge and one outgoing edge. So I will disallow this. And this doesn't change homology, so it's easy to show. Uh, so I essentially, to essentially change nothing. Second, I will look to this as a skeleton graph. So in general, if I have a graph complex that can have two valent vertices, for example, now this is a very general picture. For example, this graph complex have vertex here, vertices here, and let's say there are some two valent vertices here. What I can do is look of to this graph as a skeleton graph where vertices that are at least trivalent are called skeleton vertices. So these are skeleton vertices. And the whole construction is in between. So this here is called skeleton edge. So it's the other look to the same graph complex, it's actually equivalent definition of the same graph complex. So let us use this picture to my hairy oriented graph complex. And the essential thing is to see what are skeleton edges allowed. So hairy oriented graph complex, one here, and plus one skeleton. It has vertices that are at least trivalent and has edges. Of course, we still have simple edge like this. It can also go into the other direction. I will uh, write it because it's different. And yeah, there can be maybe some two valent vertices here, but let us think. There are no sources. So this is not source. There are no passing vertices. So this has to be a target, this two valent vertex. It has to be look like this. And because of this condition, it cannot be any longer. 
So in this skeleton picture, I have only these three possible skeleton edges. And this one, I will write simple just with this notation. Uh, okay, so you immediately see this one. This one is not good uh, graph because it gives passing vertex here. Okay, so I will need to find another example for what's further. Uh, let's. Okay. And this graph, I get to create this one. It is mapped to Rotation, it looks like this. Okay, I'm trying to prove this. So, in generally, in skeleton edges, uh, in skeleton uh, complexes, differential D, so in skeleton. The referential D splits into differential that contracts an edge plus a differential that acts only an edge. So in my case, DC will contract edge of this kind and edge of this kind. So this is contracting this and this. But this DE will act on this. It will not contract it. It will contract one of those in an old complex. But if we look of this graph as a skeleton graph, it will not contract an edge, but it will change a form an edge. So actually this DE maps this to this plus or minus this. So because if I contract this, I get this. If I contract this, I get this. So it's changing a type of an edge. So plus or minus uh, depends on the parities. I, I will try not to go to these details because it's a nightmare if you want to be precise. Okay, finally, you have to, but for the top, it's not important. Uh, so yeah, so uh, let us prove this here. I have D calculate what is D phi. So I first act with phi, then differential in uh, oriented uh, graph complex uh, with uh, looked as a skeleton is actually BC phi plus BE phi. So one can easily check that this DC phi is phi D plus phi. So this, this here um, is just kind of combinatoric. You can think of it, it's not so difficult. What is key problem is to show that this here is zero. Okay, so what is DE phi? DE phi of some graph gamma, DE of the sum of points and trees of gamma.
by tau gamma. I will continue here. Okay. Yeah. So some can go out. DE is again sum of all edges, but what edges? So I can act by DE on edges of this form. And these are edges that come from edges that are not in a tree. So edges in a set of edges of gamma, but not in the tree. The e I tau of gamma. So if I stick to this picture, I first choose a tree and then I choose an edge that's not in a tree. For example, this one and that one is here. But what I can do is to make this summation a bit different to first choose this whole, let's call it cycle tree. So if I add this edge to the tree, this is not tree anymore, it has one cycle and let the set of all almost trees that have exactly one cycle denoted uh, by CT of gamma. And I sum over all sigmas in CT of gamma. Then I choose an edge on that, on the cycle of that cycle tree. So I choose an edge in the cycle of sigma. D, this is a small here. The E phi sigma without T. Okay, so what, how does this look like? Uh, I will need some more space. This here, this is yellow. So this is one term. And the other term will be same cycle. So the same cycle three, but another edge on the, on the cycle of that cycle three. Uh, okay, so where is this sample? So it is first phi and then contracting from the E. So E is yellow. Now is now is this color orange. Okay, so what do I get? So from tau, I here get this direction. Okay, I'm sorry, I like the two directions. This direction, this direction. So 
these two remain complex and this goes there plus or minus well it will be minus trust me uh, or okay so. okay so I have three and then contract yellow edge I can get two of them and this here in both cases I get three Okay, these are not affected. This here, because of D, goes to here, minus here. So, yeah, you probably see this cancels with this. And in general, if I am choosing an edge along the cycle, just one of them cancels with one of them, the other of them cancels with one of them. And what remains is this plus the opposite. But you see, I have oriented cycle here, so both of them are actually not allowed in my oriented graph. Therefore, I get zero. So uh, this here, zero. Therefore, everything. Is zero. Okay. Any questions here? Okay. If no. Continue. So this is a story with one hair. Now let us give another, some more examples. with many hairs. So it's very similar. I will define phi from hair graph complex with any set of hair, labeled hairs, to hairy oriented graph complex and plus one with the same set of labeled hairs. It's a work with Anderson and Wilbacher from 2000. Uh, so instead of uh, one hair, I can have more hairs, for example, and they are labeled. Let's go. So this here is a graph with S equals minus two, just a simple example. Uh, so I can label hairs, but it's actually, I can also call them legs, but it's more convenient in this picture to think of a hair as an edge towards external vertex. So this is label of an external vertex that has to be one moment. And yeah, the map is very similar, 
just instead of spanning three, I take a spanning forest. For example, this one. And then it is mapped by phi on that forest to the same thing. So I have one edge going out, edge going here, here edge going out of the two. It actually pairs are part of the three, so I color them. And the rest is like Okay, uh, I still don't allow sources apart for external vertices. They, they are definitely one valent sources. Uh, and yeah, phi gamma is sum over all spanning forests of gamma. Spanning forest is. Uh, forest such that each tree in that forest contains exactly one external vertex, meaning one here. So sum over all forests, phi, that forest. I have the same results. This is a quasi-isomorphism. Okay, so this is this story with labeled external vertices, but I can maybe start, I can act by symmetric group, so action by symmetric group. Uh, okay, I already said S. Or it's called symmetric group sigma acting on the set S actually acts on carry oriented graph complex n plus one S. And what I get is carry oriented graph complex with K indistinguishable hairs. So again, they are. They're depending on the parity. Uh, okay, so I need to have a new graph complex parameter. M external vertex, vertexes of degree minus M. So, uh, and yeah, if M is negative uh, odd. Then external vertices are odd, so switching two of them gives my minus sum. So, therefore, I have a map, new map phi that goes from carry graph complex mn with any number of hairs. So, let's keep this k to carry oriented graph complex m n plus. One, this is also a quasi isomorphism. This goes directly. So let us now think of the case when M is equal to M. Uh, in this case, external vertex and the edge are of the same parity, therefore, a hair that is. Uh, construction of one edge and one external vertex is always even. So hairs are even in this picture. <coughs> so here are, so I have the graph complex and n, here hairs are even, and I have graph complex n, n plus one here, 
here are odd. Uh, so recall that there are no, by condition, there are no sources here. So I'm not a, a vertex that has all outgoing edges are not allowed. So I can, uh, but if I have a hint, this is not allowed, but if there is a hair of incoming edge from uh, external vertex, this is allowed. And actually I can, it can be shown that uh, uh, this is quasi isomorphic to the complex where all hairs are attached to sources. That means uh, hairs just act as a placeholder or a, uh, for a source. So I can just forget about that. So this is actually isomorphic to oriented graph complexes and n plus one. And with sources allowed, but I have in mind that source means I'm attaching some hair there. And since here, okay, let's draw the whole complex with a differential. I'm not allowed to change the number of hairs. Here, I'm not allowed to change the number of sources. So this is a differential, part of the differential that doesn't change the number of sources. But I have no hairs anymore. And now I realized I said something wrong. Uh, so hairs are here odd and here even, not vice versa, I said. Because uh, um, yeah, the degree of an edge is n minus one, the degree of uh, external vertex is m. So if n equals m, this is here's are here odd and here's are here even. Okay. So this kind of looks. So yeah, I have now quasi isomorphism. So now yeah, so now this complex and this complex are quasi isomorphic. Okay, these are results with Anderson. Nineteen, I guess. No. Yes. Okay, now let us try to get rid of this kind of not so nice differential D0. I will do it by looking to a dual picture. Dual. So I have a map from here to here. In a dual, I have mapped from here to here. So I have oriented graph complex and n plus one with delta. Now delta is for me vertex splitting delta zero. Goes to 
very oriented graph complex and data okay. goes to dual by very graph complex n n. Okay, as you may know, hairy graph complex in this dual have a Lie algebra structure. On both hairy graph complex and graph complex. It comes from the operator structure where we put one graph into an external vertex of the other graph and sum over all possible ways. And good thing is that psi, okay, sometimes call it psi, whatever, let's call it phi dual, uh, respects Moreover, I have Maratatan element M0 in very graph complex N, N and I have, have another Maratatan element M1 M1 in here oriented graph complex N1. So this is why it's important that I have N N because of the degree of M1 to be. Good. This M1 looks like this. So these are two external vertices. It's kind of a hair that's not attached anywhere. This M1 here is more complicated. Plus three pairs. Good thing is that phi dual of M1 equals M0. So with the Marcatan elements, I can shift differential such that I have very oriented graph complex. Very oriented graph complex and n plus one delta plus Lie bracket with this m one and yeah this phi dual will be quasi isomorphism also this shifted complexes hairy graph complex and and Okay, so maybe you can imagine this M0 adds a whole graph into this vertex. And this is actually attaching an egg hair. So this M1. We break it to M1 is sometimes denoted by P, and it's this just adding a here in possible ways. So, one good thing is uh, I have no space here, but this here. So, look at this picture. Now I shift this here. I put, okay, maybe I can just put here. I put plus. And here, and here I remove this zero. This works exactly like that. So adding a hair here, here, so shifting this differential here by adding hairs removes this condition here that I must not change the number of sources. So I have a quasi isomorphism or chain from here to here. And maybe uh, 
some of you will know that this here is the space here. It's quasi isomorphic. There is a quasi isomorphism from GC standard commutative concept complex from here to here. Actually, two valent vertices allowed. So these two means two valent vertices allowed. So finally, the last graph complex I would like to orient is the standard conserved graph complex G C N. And there are two approaches. One is this here I just uh, explained. So there is a quasi isomorphic from here to here. And this, there is a, this orienting quasi isomorphism from here to here. This works well, if you like, but maybe you would like to have a direct quasi isomorphism. Why? <laughs> GCN to oriented graph complex. And one thing I was drawing here, so if I can note here, it's not numbers, but just one. So let us try to make the direct map by from here to here. So it will work almost in the same way. So phi gamma will be equal to sum over all span trees of gamma phi tau of gamma. But now there is a problem what is the root of that tree? Because I started to talk about hair, so I started at the very beginning with exactly one hair does to have a root where, where edges will go away from. So where to start roots here? But it can be fixed by just summing over all vertices. So sum over all vertices of gamma. And okay, here I'm back into the uh, contracting differential. As but for this to be well defined, if you contract an edge next to a chosen vertex, I need to have a constant valence of x minus two. Uh, because this constant uh, is uh, preserved by contracting the mass. So this is the direct formula. Only one downside of this formula is that if I have loop classes, uh, yesterday we mentioned the loop classes, for example, L5 is this. Uh, all vertices are two and then this map would be zero. So this doesn't work for loops. The, that approach there works. But this one doesn't. But anyway, it's not a big deal because loops are simple to, to separate the stuff. Okay, so this result is from seven. Maybe you can see I'm going uh, chronologically backwards, but it's more logical to explain it in this way. So that is all pairs I wanted to explain. Just a few uh, extensions of this story or possible extensions of one. Okay. 
Okay. Further, maybe. So first, one can try to list more. Yes. A graph complex and its oriented counterpart. Well, if it's useful, it may probably work for most graph complexes. I don't see a real obstacle. One thing, one more thing one can do when it's already done in these cases are multi oriented graph complexes. They are connected to multi oriented props. By the pool of seventeen, I guess. Uh, so, what are these? So this is orienting and oriented complex, so which is just one step further. It always works. Uh, what we get is that on each edge, we have two or more, let's say for, for two directions. Let's say one is red and the other one is green. They can go in the same direction. They can go in the opposite direction. So I have one graph. And it has to be oriented so no closed loops along any color. So what's next can be done? Uh, source graph complexes. So very similar techniques. Can be used to prove this. So I have proven that graph complex N, there is phi going to oriented graph complex N plus one. It's quasi isomorphism, but there is also quasi isomorphism, quasi isomorph this projection from source graph complex N plus one is also quasi isomorphism. This is sometimes called directed graph complex n plus one v the source. Uh, so it's just a graph complex where we uh, have condition that there is at least one source, nothing else. They can be cycles, they may not be cycles, they can be targets or may not. But if there is just exactly one source, this graph complex is also quasi isomorphism. How is it isomorphic to our story here? It's uh, uh, it can be shown in a similar way. Uh, okay, there's nothing special with the source. I can also put a target, just at least one target. And yeah, maybe some of you will be interested. There is a, so if, if I have sourced graph complex and targeted graph complex. There's a short exact sequence. This goes to here is source or target and the GC source and target. So this is a short, simple, short exact sequence graph. Sorry, Mark. What, yes. What's the difference between ST and S plus T? Ah, this is uh, S and target, and this is source or target. So this graph complex has at least one source and at least one target. And this graph complex has at least one source or at least one target. And this graph complex has at least one source 
and this one has at least one target and this is a short exact sequence it's kind of simple but not yet finished but we have a reason to believe that this is zero map therefore then this would be uh, on homology so this is zero on homology so this map would be quasi isomorphism so since this here a standard graph complex homology lives here and lives here too then here we should have twice the standard graph homology okay and yeah thank you this is what i want to say yeah i'm also <laughs> thank you